Algebra 1, number 2.8a in this unit, we're talking all about the inverse of a sum and simplifying. This is the inverse of a sum and the property of 1. When we multiply a rational number by negative 1, the product is the opposite. It's the additive inverse of that number. If we multiply a positive 3 by a negative 1, we get a negative 3. And if we multiply a negative 5 by a negative 1, we get a positive 5. It's the opposite. And remember, 0 has no inverse. 0 times negative 1 is just going to be 0. The property of negative 1 helps us find an equivalent expression for the additive inverse of a sum, for the opposite of a sum. So here's the formal property of negative 1 for any rational number a, negative 1 times a, the inverse of 1 times a equals the inverse of a. Negative 1 times a is the additive inverse of a. And the inverse of a sum property says for any rational numbers a and b, the additive inverse of a sum like a plus b is the sum of the additive inverse, negative a plus negative b. So imagine the a and b were a 2 and a 5. That would mean if we have negative on the outside of the parentheses and then 2 plus 5, it's going to be distributed to each one. We'll have a negative 2 plus a negative 5. See? We can rename each additive inverse without parentheses. So imagine that we've got negative and then 2 plus x. Well, our friend the invisible 1 is there. That's the property of negative 1. So in between a negative sign and a parentheses, our friend the invisible 1 is there. And we can distribute him to each of the uh, terms inside of the parentheses. So we would have negative 1 times 2 plus negative 1 times x using the distributive property. And then using the property of negative 1 again, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 plus Negative 1 times x is negative x. We don't have to put that 1, do we? And then using the subtraction rule for positives and negatives, that would give us negative 2, and plus the minus would be minus x. See? Let's try this one. Now we've got negative on the outside, so we know our invisible 1 is there, right? 2x plus 3y plus 4. We're going to distribute this negative 1 to everybody inside, all the terms inside the parentheses. So that's going to give us, you can follow along on this second line here, negative 1 times 2x plus negative 1 times 3y and negative 1 times 4. Well, don't forget our plus negative 1 times 4, okay? Now we can start simplifying this. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x plus negative 1 times 3y is negative 3y plus negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. So when it's simplified, we get negative 2x minus 3y because when you add a negative, it's minus 3y and plus the negative 4 is going to give us a minus 4, see? Remember, the, the plus and the minus signs when we did that earlier in this playlist. So it's like saying if I've got 2 plus a negative 1, I'm pretty much saying, I am saying, I'm, it's 2 minus 1, okay? So if you have two candies and you're going to add taking one candy away, you're taking one candy away. That's basically what it's saying, okay? All right, so because any difference can be expressed as a sum, the inverse of a sum property works for differences and sums, subtraction and addition. It even works for more than two terms. So sometimes algebraic expressions have like five terms in them. It works. When we use the inverse of a sum property, we change the sign for every term inside the parentheses. So look at this. We've got a negative on the outside and then this is a positive 4 on the inside, isn't it? We've got a positive 4 and a negative y. So by distributing this, we're going to, and our, imagine our friend the invisible 1 is there, we're going to get a negative 1 times a positive 4. That's going to give us a negative 4, isn't it? And a negative 1 times a negative y is going to give us a positive y because we have two negatives. Well, see how it changed the sign for every term? This was a positive 4 and a negative y. Now we have a negative 4 and a positive y. It just flipped the signs around. So when you see this minus sign in front of parentheses, you know that you could just change the signs for everybody. But remember, the number up here is a positive. So there's a plus sign here that would have to be changed into a negative sign, wouldn't it? Let's try this one. We have the minus sign on the outside. Then we got 3a minus 5b minus 7. 
So now we're going to change all the signs. This guy is going to make everybody inside change his sign. This is a positive 3a. He's going to become a negative 3a. This is a negative 5b. He's going to become a five, positive 5b. This negative 7 is going to be a positive 7. See? Negative 1 times a positive 3a is a negative 3a. Negative 1 times a negative 5b is a positive. We have two negatives. And a negative times a negative 7 is going to give us a positive 7. See? We just changed the signs. Let's look at this one. Now we have a negative here. We have a negative times a negative. That's going to give us a positive 2x, isn't it? It's going to change that sign to a positive. Negative 1 times a positive 3y. Negative and positive make a negative. So we got a negative 3y. It changed the sign. And a negative 1 times a negative 10, two negatives, it changed it to a positive 10. See? Now, you can see the description in this video for a link about the invisible one and some other videos that might help you about working with parentheses and the distributive property, okay? In our next video, 2.8b, we're going to talk about simplifying expressions and parentheses, okay? I hope I'll see you there. Keep trying. Keep up the good work. Bye.